Okay, so today we're going to talk about classifying acids and bases. Strong acids completely dissociate or break apart into ionize, into ions. We also call that ionizing. So sometimes you'll hear it referred to as completely ionizing, breaking apart into ions, or dissociating. All of those terms are synonymous. And they do that when we put them in water. Therefore, they are strong electrolytes. Remember the last unit we talked about electrolytes being solutions which conduct electricity. The reason they conduct electricity is because all of their ions are freely moving, and when we have free moving ions, we have free moving negative charges, therefore we have electricity that can flow. There are six strong acids, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, sulfuric, nitric, and perchloric. All other acids are weak, you need to learn these six. If you know these six, then you can identify any acid as strong or weak. Strong bases completely dissociate in water as well. They too are strong electrolytes. <coughs> um, there are seven of those you'll need to learn that are common. You'll need to learn those. Sodium, lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium. Note those are all group one. Francium is a, would be as well, but it's not common in, on Earth, so we don't really address it, but it would be. So basically, group 1 hydroxides, and then a good number of our group 2 hydroxides. So calcium, strontium, and barium. Note that not all of our group 2 hydroxides are considered strong, only these three. Alright, so a weak acid or base does not dissociate completely. They exist in a state of what we call equilibrium. We talk about equilibrium a few different times. In the next unit, we'll talk more about equilibrium. But basically, it means that the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are happening at the same rate. So both of these things are occurring at the same time. All right? We saw equations like this in our first video on bronsted lowry acids and bases. So basically, a weak acid gets a, gives its hydrogen to water and becomes a conjugate base. And then the water becomes a hydronium ion which then is a conjugate acid. A weak base gains a hydrogen from the water, becomes a conjugate acid, and then um, produces hydroxide. Okay? Again, the reason this is considered an acid is because it produces this hydronium, which is also the same thing as a hydrogen ion. The reason this is a base is because it produces hydroxide. Another way we can classify acids is by the number of hydrogen ions they have, which are our acidic hydrogens. There are some acids which have hydrogen in them, like acetic acid, but the only, which, but the only ion that um, is acidic hydrogen is the one in the front. The um, three hydrogen ions within the acetate ion are not acidic. So if you are a monoproduct, that means you have one acidic hydrogen, such as Chloric acid, also as I was just talking about, acetic acid, also will have be a monoprotic acid. A diprotic acid has two hydrogens, such as sulfuric acid. A triprotic acid has three hydrogens, um, like phosphoric acid. So those are basically the two ways we can classify things based on whether or not they're strong or weak and how many hydrogen ions they have. 